Large litters, small litters, what causes them? Why do you get singletons? What's a singleton? And how can you get a big litter? I'm gonna share all that information with you. We got ship semen coming in for little baby Junebug. We're gonna be breeding Junebug, and I'm gonna show you some of my secrets to getting a large litter. My girl Malibu, this morning she had a singleton litter. Do I not introduce myself? My name's David. I'm the Bulldog Breeder. I'm Big Bone Bulldogs. And my friends call me DB. And this is Malibu. We're back in the whelping box. So we're not gonna just talk about singletons, who's peeing on me right now. Uh -oh. Let's get you down here. As soon as they feel that warm hands, it stimulates the bowels. So a week has gone by, everybody. And like I said, I'm not gonna talk to you about just singletons, but I'm gonna talk to you guys about large litters. How you can achieve a large litter, and what's the difference in having a singleton or having a large litter? You know, what goes into what are the different things that come into play that will cause a singleton or you getting a large litter? The difference is timing for the most part. For the most part, it's gonna be about timing. There's also other factors that go into it. Like with the males, it's gonna be about motility, um, sperm count and motility. Does that male have a low sperm count with low motility? That can have a lot to do with a small litter or causing a singleton. With the females, it's gonna be all about fertility. Um, is she immature? Is it her first heat and you're trying to breed her and she's immature and there's not enough mature eggs to drop? Um, is she a geriatric dog? Is she an old dog and she's already... Dogs are born with all the eggs they're gonna have for their entire life, females. So once those eggs are gone, they're gone. So it could be a geriatric dog, an older dog that just has a low, you know, she has a low fertility egg count. Those are some of the different things that can happen. I think it's kind of clear, we all should know, don't breed your dogs on the first heat, don't breed them when they're immature, and don't breed them when they're geriatric. You wanna breed them when they're mature and healthy. So, now let's talk about breeding the dog when it's mature and healthy. What can cause the difference between a singleton in a large litter. And I know you guys wanna know about how to get those large litters. And it's not as simple as you think. I'm gonna show you the different steps that I take to try to achieve a large litter. And you may be asking, why do I wanna take advice from this guy? He's got a singleton right now. Well, things don't always go as planned. I wasn't able to breed Malibu when I wanted to breed Malibu. Her numbers were rising. I used shipped semen. I put in the call to have the semen shipped the following day. When the semen came in, she stalled on me. I tested her levels again that day. I was curious to see where she was at that day, if she was still moving how I thought she should be moving, and she didn't. She kind of she slowed down, so she stalled on me. I had already received the semen, so there wasn't much I could do. So what I chose to do is leave the semen in the fridge keep it cool, hold it, allow her numbers to go up a little higher, and then I went ahead and inseminated her with that sample. I also reached out to the stud owner and asked for a second sample, which is very typical. I like to use two samples whenever I'm doing a ship semen breeding. I like to pay the extra money and always do two samples. That's my preference. And especially in this situation, it was crucial I needed that second sample. I gave him a call, it was a Friday. He said, I'm going out of town. He said, um, he checked with me to make sure I got the other box and said he's out of town for the weekend. So unfortunately he wasn't able to send me another shipment. As a stud owner, you should go above and beyond. Just doing enough is not good enough. My opinion, you should go above and beyond to do whatever you have to do to help them achieve their breeding. I asked for another sample. I was more than willing to pay for the shipment of the other sample. But 
but he was going out of town. Apparently he couldn't get nobody to pull the sample. He couldn't get nobody to ship the sample. I didn't get a second sample. And I got a small singleton litter. So that's how I got this singleton. I thought we missed. I thought she didn't even take. But then I started seeing signs. And it was clear to me that she was pregnant, but just with a small litter. And sure enough, we got one singleton puppy. But now, let me show you what I'm doing currently to make sure I get a large litter. Fun stuff. Let's talk about large litters and how you can achieve a large litter. Right now, I got my girl Junebug in heat. I've already started progesterone testing her. I tested her on the 12th, the 15th, and I think the 19th. Nope, 17th. It's the 17th. All right. First, let me give you the background on Junebug. Junebug is in what's called a split heat. I always tell people never to buy a dog in heat. It's not a smart move. More than likely when you're buying a dog in heat, you're doing it because you're assuming you're gonna get right to work. You're gonna get a litter, you're gonna be able to impregnate her, get a litter right away. It's not gonna work like that. Due to environmental change, nine times out of 10, she's gonna go into a split heat or she's just not gonna lay eggs. Junebug, I had just acquired her and she was in heat when I got her. I didn't plan it that way, but that's what happened. So we started testing last time. She was at like a two, three, four. She never got above five. She got at four and then was at like four and then like dropped to a three. And I could tell I already knew what was going on. So I, I stopped testing her and I let it go. Two months have passed now. I looked at her vulva the other day and she's swollen <coughs> right up like a flower. The other dogs, the males are inter interested in her, so I could tell she was back into heat. So that's what a split heat is. A split heat is when your dog goes into heat and then the stops and then the heat cycle picks back up a couple weeks or a couple months later. That's a true split heat. I know you've been hearing this term a lot. That's a true split heat. So now Junebug is on the back end of her split heat. On the 12th, she was at a 4.5. I skipped a couple days. I tested her again on the 15th. She was at a 6.5. 6.5. Now, I was using the Wanfo machine. There's two different main, there's three different main progesterone machines. You got the IDEX, which is going to be in the clinics. Most major clinics are gonna use the IDEX machine. Then you have the Wanfo machines, which are very popular. And then you have the Mini Cube is the other option you're gonna see that's becoming more popular. Wanfos are great, they're very accurate. The cartridges self-calibrate themselves. I sell the Wanfo machine on my website. We also have a Wanfo package because you need cartridges, you need, you need a couple tools that come with it, so it's best to buy the whole bundle if this is if you're new to this, go to my website, bigbonebulldogs.com, get you a progesterone machine, get you a bunch of things, microscopes, scales, all kinds of breeder supplies. I'm not gonna get into that right now. When you're done watching this video, go check it out for yourself, link in the bio. I think they got some stuff running, running along the bottom of this video on my, on my YouTube channel. Bigbonebulldogs.com, go check it out. So, what are you using the Wanfo machine? Let's put that up. Wanfo. So we're testing on the Wanfo machine. On the Wanfo machine, when you're breeding your dog, there's numbers. Numbers are important, right? The numbers are only important because you want to find ovulation. That's the only reason the numbers are important, because you want to know when ovulation is. Ovulation on the Wanfo machine is between six and eight. So as you can see, she's in pre-ovulation. She's starting ovulation. 
Typically, you want to inseminate two days after ovulation because the eggs need two days to mature. So, on the 15th, she was a six and a half. I decided two days later, the 17th, she should be ripe. She should be ready. That should be the best time for me to hit or for me to get it into her because I'm doing an AI. I'm not doing a surgical. I'm not doing a TCI. TCI and surgical, you're going to do on higher numbers. When you're doing an AI, it takes time for that semen to move through the canal. So you're going to hit, you're going to start it at a lower number. Um, so I, when I saw the 6.5, also remember we're on the back of a split heat. So I kind of had a feeling she might really start to run because it's been, it's been going for so long. This is the back end of a split heat. So I'm thinking that her LH surge might be pretty intense this time. I don't know. Got to figure it out. So, but that's the strategy I kind of went in with, or I should say that's the mindset I went in with. So LH surge, what's LH surge? So around pre-ovulation is when the dog's going to hit what's called LH surge. Let's put that over here. LH surge. Your dog's numbers are going to move slow, and then when it hits LH surge, it's going to go fast. So, I, and I'm using shipped semen, which means I have to let them know the day before so they can overnight it for the next day. So, I decided to have semen shipped in for two days later, the 17th. On the 17th, when I tested her to see what her levels were at before I did the insemination, she was at a 14.5. It's not bad. It would have sucked if she was at like a 9, 10, 12, something still. She wasn't. She's moving. She's at a 14.5. I would have rathered her be around like 18 or 20. That would have been great. But she's at a 14.5. But that's cool. I waited till later in the day to do the, um, to do the breeding. I let the semen shit. I had the semen at noon, but I waited till about 7 o'clock p.m. to actually inseminate her. And we inseminated her for the first time at 14.5. Shipped semen. I did that because I already know I'm going to be doing two inseminations on this breeding. I've already had good communication with the stud owner. There's nobody else testing for the stud for this week. He's not using it on any of his girls. So the stud is open for the week. And I've already agreed to pay shipping, extra shipping, and he's available to get my second shipment. So we're already cool. I'm already planning on doing a two insemination breeding, which is what I like to always do when I use ship semen. I like to always do two inseminations unless my girl's number is already high when I do the first one. There's kind of no point, right? So I went ahead and inseminated her at 14.5 because I know I got another insemination coming, right? That was yesterday. If that number was higher, I would have had him ship out another sample for today. But I didn't, because I want that number to rise more. The Wanfo machine, they've changed their numbers around. Um, each test strip you buy is calibrated, so they can change everything in the strip. They don't have to access your machine. That's what's good about the Wanfo machine, is it self-calibrates itself. So that's why it's one of the most accurate machines, and everybody uses them. Lately, the Wanfo has changed their peak fertilization numbers to 20 to 35. 20 to 35. And I ideally think like around 24 is a solid number for the Wanfo machine. A 24 is like sweet spot, right? But I put it in at a 14. So I want to at least get up closer around this 24 or even higher, according to Wanfo, 35. So instead of having semen shipping, shipped for the next day, which typically I do like to do back to back. Why do I like to do back to back? Because it can make things easier on the back end when you're scheduling your C-section because you, these are bulldogs. So we need to schedule C-sections before they go into labor. 
So it's a thin line of making sure those puppies have been in there long enough and making sure you schedule a C-section before your girl goes into labor, making you have to go get an emergency C-section, which will cost you a lot of money and, very, and a lot of inconvenience. So I decided to wait a day and have him ship out another sample today for tomorrow, Saturday the 19th. So 17th, 19th. So tomorrow I'll have another shipment coming. And since I'm doing, typically I wouldn't progesterone test anymore. At this point, I've already got two samples. It is what it is. You're gonna go ahead and put it in and let it ride. But because I'm doing this video and I'm collecting data to help me be better in the future, I'm gonna go ahead and progesterone test her tomorrow to see what number it is when we do our second insemination. So let me show you a little bit about what went down yesterday on the first breeding, and then we'll get to the second breeding. We got ghost face semen came all the way from Cali, gold rush Today, bullies. I'm gonna show you the procedures I go through when doing a ship semen breeding. We're gonna open up the semen, we're gonna check it out on the microscope, see how the semen looks. We're gonna warm it up for insemination, and then we're gonna go ahead and inseminate our female. I've already done my progesterone testing. She's still a little bit low. We're gonna go ahead and inseminate her anyways, and I'm gonna get another shipment sent for Saturday morning. So I'm gonna to skip tomorrow, and we're gonna inseminate the following day. One more time, so that I can hit her numbers where I want. I'm using a Wanfo machine for my progesterone testing, and ideally, I'd like her numbers up into the low 20s. I've been having better results with higher numbers lately, so I'd like her numbers to be up in the low 20s when I get an insemination in. Like I said, today she's at a 14, but she's surging, she's moving, so I do wanna get semen in there anyways. It's still gonna need time to make its way to where it's going, but for backup, I am gonna get another insemination sent so that that insemination, I hit right on the numbers where I wanna hit. Nice and cold still, that's good. But like I was saying, now you gotta heat it up. We gotta warm it up. You wanna bring the semen up to body temperature before inseminating your female. That way it doesn't shock the seed. We're gonna spin this down and we're gonna pull the pellet out of the bottom. You can see he gave us about a six ml collection, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin this down in the centrifuge and concentrate this collection before inseminating it into her. There's no reason to be putting six mls into her. She can't absorb all that. So we're gonna concentrate it down to two mls. We got our AI kit. Normally I use a larger syringe, but this 3L, 3 ml syringe will be more than fine because like I said, we're only going to use 2 mls condensed. attacking which is good so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna spin the sample down and we're gonna concentrate it all right let's see what we got you see the pellet Now we have our semen loaded up. And I like to leave a little pocket of air behind it also so you can push everything out of the pipette. Come on, Junebird. Hey, mama.
just did June Bug's first insemination. We're going to get another shipment sent overnight. We're going to skip a day, do another insemination on June Bug. But check out what I found her doing on the cameras, and it's something you guys need to be aware of. And she almost caught me slipping. What you got going on back here, Magilla Gorilla? You trying to get him some June Bug? June Bug, you back here flagging Magilla? I shouldn't do this. I got my mail right here, Magilla Gorilla, and I got June Bug in heat in the stall right next to him. And it's driving him crazy. I came out here because I could hear him just barking like nut, like a nutso. And sh I look on the camera. I mean, as you can see, she is red. She's pretty much flagging him through the fence. And I mean, you can't put nothing against dogs. Could Magilla get it in through the fence? It's possible. Anything's possible. And when you start breeding dogs, you're gonna realize that anything is possible and it happens. The impossible happens. <laughs> so I'm gonna uh, rearrange this scenario right here before anything happens. Your semen's coming tomorrow. So we're gonna run another progesterone test on Junebug and I'm gonna grab an AI kit. And then after that, we gotta head to the airport. But right now we're pulling up to my buddies I don't know if I should tell you who it is or let you guys see it out. I'm not gonna stick around for the result because I gotta get to the airport. So let's get to work. So if you guys know who that was, drop a shout out in the comment. And let if you me don't know. already know who that is, I'll be introducing you to him in some future episodes. So make sure you guys are subscribed, click that like button, make sure you're following me on all my socials. Big Bone Bulldog Farm is my newest Instagram. Big Bone Bulldogs on TikTok and The Bulldog Breeder. Well, I messed that up. I didn't hit the camera button on, so I just completely missed the Honey Badger handoff. Sorry you guys missed it. Honey Badger's on his way to New Orleans. I'm on the way home. Let's breed June Bugs. Let's go. Bug semen. Alright, we already got a fresh slide waiting. The top slide. up we got about seven eight mls right now he probably pulled three to four and then they put three to four of semen extender in there so that's prostatic fluid semen extender and semen we're gonna spin it for about four or five minutes at 2,000 rpm see what we got all right we got a pellet that's our semen. You ready, Junebug? So I like to pull it back a little bit to about two cc's, so I have some air to push it. Suck that pellet right up. All this is trash. All this is trash. All that would have done is dilute this. 
So now you're getting rid of the dilute and you're working with a more concentrated sample. You see we have four cc's going in. I hear you puppies. I hear you. I love you. Anybody looking for some mini and micro English Bulldog puppies, reach out to me. I got a few available and they're ready for their new home and I'm ready for them to go. I've had fun ice cream man, but I guess you're ready. All right. I love you. I love you. Ice cream man's ready to go. Reach out to me. I'm very motivated to give you a good price on this little guy. Pantera, what you doing, mama? Pantera, sit. Pantera is my cane corso, otherwise known as an Italian mastiff. She protects the bulldog farm. She roams free on the and property. I'm going to leave the pipette in, and I'm going to leave her in this position for the next 15 minutes. And a matter of fact, I've kind of figured out exactly what I want to do with this channel. What I'm going to be doing is showing you all of my breedings. I'm going to show you the ins and outs, the numbers, everything on all of my breeding from now on. So this is two days since I did the first insemination. Remember, we skipped a day in between. When I did that first insemination, she was more wide open. It went in really smooth. It still went in good this time, but it was a little more snug, which tells you, you know, you're, you're on that back end. You're on that back end, she's starting to tighten but back up. But for a large litter, that's what you want to do. You want to sneak in that back door right before it closes because at the very end of her cycle is when she's gonna drop all her eggs. When she's ready to come out of her cycle, she's gonna just drop all the eggs. So ideally, you wanna catch the back end of the cycle. So I just got the phone call, and I got the progesterone number, and the number came back. Wrong marker. The number came back. 26.4. So that's good. Like I said, 24 is kinda of what I've been aiming for lately on the fine care is another name people know the machine by and the eight is wrong i was totally wrong on that i just looked at that they actually said it's six to thirteen right now so on the fine care one flow machine ovulation range is six to thirteen i like to aim for twenty four today we did an insemination our first insemination was at fourteen five Today was our second insemination at 26.4. Another thing you can do to add your chances of having a large Go litter. Go to my website. There's a product from Hoke Labs. It's a company out of Europe that I'm partners with. I'm one of the few distributors in the States. And there's a semen extender on there from them, ready to use, dairy free, that you're really going to like. I'm having great results with that. But next to the semen extender, don't get them confused. Next to the semen extender, there's a product called a semen enhancer. It's five dollars cheaper. I believe it's forty-five dollars on the website. It's a semen enhancer. So imagine this. Okay, the semen extender is when you're shipping semen out. The semen enhancer is when you're inseminating your girl when you're doing insemination. It's something that you add to the semen to enhance it. How? Best way I can explain it, it's like there you go. Here, I'm gonna have fun with this whiteboard, you guys. And I'm a horrible drawer. These are the eggs inside the female. Your spermies are going in there. All right. Now imagine if you gave them, if you sent them in there. I told you guys I can't draw. Imagine if you send them in there with a pizza, some Mountain Dew, a bunch of Mountain Dew, big bottles of Mountain Dew, bunch of Mountain Dew, all right, maybe a pot of coffee, a cup of coffee, we came up with a cup, or oh, it's a hot coffee. Some cups of hot coffee, some pizza, some Mountain Dew. It's gonna be like a party in there. They're gonna be hanging out. They're gonna have plenty of food. They're gonna have energy. They're gonna be enhanced. They're gonna be working better. 
They're gonna have food to feed on, and it's gonna have like a caffeine enhancement effect on their performance. So if you really wanna add to your chances of getting a large litter, go check out my website, bigbonebulldogs.com, and try that Hoke Semen Enhancer. Back to ovulation. Why is ovulation so important? Not just now for your breeding, but it's even more important for when you're scheduling your C-section. You need to know when ovulation day is. So if you wanna know more about that, check out my video on when to schedule your C-section, and I'll see y'all next time. Thank you.